Do me a favor, take the palm of your hand, place it two inches below your belly button, and this is your sacral chakra. <laughs> Welcome back to my chakra series. A few weeks ago, we explored the root chakra, which had everything to do with our basic needs as human beings, with our survival and safety. Well, this chakra, the sacral chakra, has everything to do with our emotions. So it's a chakra directly linked to our reproductive system and a part of the digestive system, which means that it's, our, it's the center of our creativity, center of our pleasure, of our sexuality, of our freedom and passion. And it's very linked to the feelings and emotions of shame and guilt. And what does that mean? So if you think about all the energy that it takes to create and birth a child, it makes sense that this chakra right here is the center of our creativity. So if you're someone that heavily relies on your creativity to either birth ideas, new projects to create, and your sacral chakra is blocked, then you may be feeling it. It's also the center of our sexuality, of course, still very linked to our reproductive system. So for people who don't feel free to fully express themselves sexually or to explore their sexuality, that may affect your sacral chakra. Now, it, that's seen mostly in people with very restrictive religious background, people part of the LGBTQIA community that were made to feel guilty or ashamed of uh, their sexuality or that didn't feel free to express themselves. Um, women that were shamed for exploring their sexuality, um, all of this heavily affects your sacral chakra. When you're in a relationship as well, and then you um, make your partner feel guilty about the fact that their libido doesn't necessarily match yours, whether it be lower or higher, or uh, you shame them for their sexual preferences, that again affects your sacral chakra. If you think about our sexuality, it's it's being sensual, being sexual. It's one of our basic needs as human beings. So it's sad, in my opinion, that we live in a society that does not normalize sexual needs and sexual desires in every sense of the term. With that said, um, if you're going to be intimate with someone, make sure that it's based out of pure pleasure, or love if you like, and not because you feel like you have to. I've been there, so some of you will understand what I'm trying to say. It's also the center of her pleasure. So for those workaholics out there who prioritize work, which is very important, it's also crucial that we, as adults, still embrace our inner child and allow ourselves to, f to feel, to have fun, to follow our uh, highest excitement, really. We're sent here to follow our highest excitement. We're not sent here to force ourselves to do something that we don't want to do every day. So the sacral chakra is something that's commonly blocked. A lot of us, if not most of us, walk around with unaligned sacral chakras because all of these needs are not met. It's also very linked to the emotions of shame and guilt. Uh, so, and, and so the shame and the guilt, it's not just in our sexual life, if we're, if we done something, we feel ashamed or and guilty and we won't let it go in any other area of our lives, it also affects our sacral chakra. So it's important that we process our feelings, that we forgive ourselves and that we release them. And when I talk about forgiving, it's also important to forgive other people and it's not to please them. It's because if we don't forgive that means we're also holding some sort of resentment and uh, that resentment is held somewhere in your body and that may eventually create illnesses in your body so if you're someone who suffers from lower back pain who has any problem with your, any of your reproductive organs any um, problems with your kidneys with your colon uh, with your bladder all of this may suggest that uh, your a sacral chakra may be out of alignment. All right, to unblock your sacral chakra, there's so many things that you can do. First of all, wearing the color orange, 
being around the color orange helps. Things like meditation and meditate with the intention of activating your sacral chakra. And while you're meditating, make sure you're breathing into your lower belly or lower back. Um, things like yoga, specific yoga poses could be uh, the warrior pose, the goddess pose, or uh, lower lunge. Kundalini yoga is also very, very good for the sacral chakra. Um, and um, plants, plant supplements like ashwagandha root is very good for it. Maca root, orange, hibiscus, um, things like coriander, paprika, uh, fruits like again, oranges, papaya, even sweet potatoes. There's so many things that could help you with it. And again, when you're having these things, uh, it doesn't matter in which form you're ha you have them, whether it's a tea or just a supplement in your smoothie or however you choose to have them or as, as a spice in your food, uh, make sure that when you're having them that your intention is to um, activate your sacral chakra. And again, enjoying life to the fullest. The chakra is all about you expressing yourself and being you expressing yourself fully and you enjoying life fully and following your passion. So listen to yourself. Again, meditation is so good to help you listen to yourself and then acting on whatever you discover. So acting on your highest excit excitement, acting on what makes you happy. Again, you're not here to please anybody and you're not here to force yourself to do um, something every day that you don't like. You're here to listen to yourself. You have specific interests for a reason. You have specific fas passions uh, for a reason. Your desires and needs are your body t telling you something, asking you for something. Um, so it's good that we listen to them and from time to time to act on them, if not always. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Next up, we'll be exploring um, the third chakra, which is um, our solar plexus chakra. So I'll see you soon. Bye.